All right, we made it down to uh, Port 7 Launch. Uh, the original place we was going to go was free, but there's a lot of cars already parked there and the road was getting quite busy. So this place is very quiet, but it's 40 bucks. <laughs> so we looked at a few other places, but we decided, you know, we're just going to have to suck it up and pay the 40 bucks because the time we've driven around and found other places, it's just too much stress. So you know what? This is where we're going to launch from today. It looks nice. Straightforward. Uh, access to the main water over there. So a uh, little nice area here, right? Just off the Highway 400. So we'll get the skis ready and uh, we'll hit the water. Finally on the water. It's like a little bit longer than I expected because we're too busy yapping as always. So anyway, uh, I was trying to play around with the GPS, trying to set the coordinates. I was getting a little frustrated because uh, I, I don't really learn how to use it proper. So anyway, there's a guy behind us who's just come in. He's actually heading out that way and he knows the water. So uh, we're going to tag along with him and follow him, which is kind of nice just to get us up there. Uh, maybe once I get to that area and get some time to have a break, I'll uh, actually manage to put the coordinates in, into the GPS. Right, the air's a little cool up here. It was uh, 22 degrees when I left the house this morning at 5.30. It's currently 18 degrees right here, with a slightly northerly cool breeze. So the humidity's gone. I do have a jacket just in case, but uh, we'll see how the day goes. So anyway, our first stop's going to be out of here and make our way over to uh, Big Shoot. Uh, Rob and Michelle. Uh, kindly offered to uh, escort us to Big Shoot, which is really, really nice. Uh, Rob rides around this area quite a lot, so he's going to be our guide, which has turned out to be fantastic. So I'm having a hard time putting the coordinates into my GPS because uh, I'm a bit illiterate that way. Uh, but I'm going to figure it out when we get our first stop. So anyway, we're heading out onto the open water, and I do have one other problem. I forgot my clip because I was out filming in the storms the other day. And uh, I took my clip off that and used a, a, a screwing one and I forgot to put it back on. So my other camera is attached to a big pole right now uh, and it can't go on that. So what I might do is switch this one to that later and hold the massive dry, uh, uh, monopod in my hand. So anyway, let's head out of the marina and check out the lovely Trent Waterway here. board of his dog. How cool is that? I think that might be the tunnel ahead. It's a little small little cutting. Well it's alright if you got the money you live up here eh? Wow. Oh, 
is cool. It doesn't echo. Alright, that's a little disappointing. There's no echo in here. Well, not much. Viva Ronaldo! Viva Ronaldo! That yeah, kind of works. Right, right above me now is uh, the Series 400 Series Highway. Okay, so I just came down here, there's a couple of markers, well quite a few markers in the water, and I asked what they were. I'll show you what, I'll show you first. Kids will play. I just had to do a bit of a wash there, right? That was the last one through. All right, onwards we go. up to a big shoot right now i'll just spin it around so you can see quite nicely so we're just going to pull up at the uh, the wall there and wait for the uh the system to come back down and pick us up and, and what i'll do um i'll find out some more information on the place and i'll narrate over it like this Big Shoot Marine Railway, the very first one was built in 1916. However, the one we're riding on today was built in 1978. It takes you up about 60 feet and drops you off on the other side of the uh, lock and drops you into the water at the other side. Very impressive. The Big Shoot Marine Railway, located here at Lock 44, is the only one of its kind in the whole of North America. 
All right, as you can see from the video right now, uh, we're just waiting around. And what's happening is the person on the uh, the railway system is actually uh, on a tannoy, is uh, announcing to the boaters here uh, where to go, which one goes where, and so on. Listen. Let's see if we can get this derailed first. Front left. And the two personal watercraft that were here first. Front right. And the third personal watercraft. So he's just instructed the two watercraft, which is Woody and Rob, uh, to go front and right. Okay, as the carriage starts to move, it's advisable to hold on to the railings. And you want your, uh, your sea do about a foot away from the wall and hold on, because your vessel will tilt to the left or to the right. And you want to make sure you've got a few inches uh, spare so you don't actually fall onto the wall. Now, that's a weird feeling when you kind of tip over, but you don't tip over. So we're now on our way. If memory serves me correct, I believe I paid $11.22 and that's for a return trip on this particular lock. And I paid by debit, but I believe you can also pay by cash. As I was filming this shot, I realized I had the monopod in my hand and it was fully extended. So what I did, I lowered it again, twisted the camera upside down and then dropped it underneath. And it gave us this fantastic shot like this. Um, so my monopod actually gave me an extra five feet underneath so you get a nice view of the railway system uh, from this angle which is something I've never seen before I've watched many videos uh, on the big shoot railway but never seen uh, this vantage point but here we are just crossing over the main road what was interesting about going over the main road was it's kind of like a railway crossing. The barrier comes down, the lights flashes, but it literally just goes off several seconds uh, before the railway car actually comes over the road. Not like a train where it goes off for quite a bit beforehand. Anyway, so here we are. We're just now descending back into the uh, the next system of water, the next uh, level of water. And uh, what a cool uh, viewing point. I really think this is cool. So anyway, uh, we'll be carrying on very, very shortly. And I've got some more footage similar to this on the way back as well. So make sure you stick around and uh, check that out as well, which is coming up very, very shortly. cool was that that was great thoroughly enjoyed that that was worth the trip out here what a unique system wow really cool well at least the sun's trying to come back out again so it might warm up a little bit it got a little chilly for a while i nearly put the top on but decided not to all right i'm gonna catch up with these guys I 
my bridges. Like my bridges and my lighthouses. Old railway bridge there. Usual classic design. They all look alike, right? But it's just, it just fascinates me how they build these things. Right. Now, when we're at the lock system there, a big shoe that warned us there is a lot of traffic coming up river, which there is, there's a hell of a lot. Uh, it's like endless. So we have to be careful on the time to make sure we get back because I think the last, I think they closed about 4, 4.30, so we've got to make sure we're back there. There's plenty of time to line up to make sure we get back over. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's all we can do. But it's quite busy coming the other way. So with it being so busy, we decided to just go up to the next lock, ride the lock, go up. And when we got to the top, we decided we we're going to come straight back down because there was a big liner. So uh, this is what the next uh, lock system looked like. We're going straight in. So uh, this is the next uh, lock we're doing. Oh, this is the uh, Swift Rapids lock. Now I feel like one of the big ships in the uh, Welland Canal. This thing's huge for this little ditty thing. But, uh, yeah. Wow. This is enormous. We can. All right, you can see behind me the doors are closing. And momentarily, this will fill up and take us up to the next system. And my batteries are dying. So this is cool. Hopefully, the, uh, it will last. Now we're in. Going up. Hold on to your lines, please, all the way up. All right, here we go. We're going up. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's time to go. So that was Swift Rapids Lock, which is now number 43. 
Uh, it's a model lock uh, that was completed back in 1965 and is the deepest conventional lock on the whole 7 Trent system with a lift of 47 meters. Uh, like I said, it was built in 1965 and it replaced the Marine Railway which was constructed back in the early 1900s. Okay, we're now back at the Big Shoot Railway. Uh, we'll just fast forward everything right here because it was quite a busy day on the waterway and there's no point just keep showing you clips of me driving up and down. So we're straight back here at the Big Shoot Railway. We're just about to load ourselves into the carriage for the descent down into the next level of water. Well, what's the question? Yeah, I am. <laughs> so these people came across my channel uh, recently, so that's cool. <laughs> He's playing on his phone now, but he did, he did ask me a question. <laughs> oh, you have? <laughs> oh, Mark? You, uh, Mark? Mark Forrest? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've ride with Mark a couple of times. Rob and Michelle are just riding off into the Honda. Um, we're going to stop and have a bite of lunch. So we told us this is a good place to just moor up and uh, yeah, have some food. We want, we want some food with us anyway. So we're going to make the most of it. Uh, it was nice meeting uh, that family on that boat who watched my channel, which was fantastic. So uh, uh, it wasn't the sea dude that gave it away because it was more my accent gave it away. <laughs> he recognized the voice. So that's kind of cool. So uh, anyway, I got another subscriber. His son's going to subscribe. Yes! So I'm getting up there, so I'm really happy. Alright, we just pulled up uh, moored up here, for, so we're going to have a bite to eat. It's quite busy, quite a few people. Uh, a couple of big boats and a big dog. So we'll try it here for a bit. Now, that made my day, that guy and the kid. Oh, yeah, that was oh my God, that made my day. Yeah. Hey, you the guy on YouTube? Yeah, it was your voice that gave it away. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah, and he's bought two sea -Doo's just this year, which is good. Yeah, and he also gets his, he's ordered some parts from Energy Power Sports, he told me, for his ATV. So, uh, that's good news. a lighthouse <laughs> probably the world's smallest lighthouse oh someone just got married over there and having some wedding photographs done very very pretty very nice we should take the sea dew down there give him a splash now we'll do that congratulations to you both well that's a lighthouse anyway i'm counting that as a lighthouse they named this place cottage country so uh, anyone outside of Ontario may not know that, but this is cottage country. But the funny thing is, I 
I've been driving around for a long time and I don't see any bloody cottages. All I see is massive, big, freaking houses like that. That is not a cottage. Where I come from, a cottage is really, really small. Really small. But um, not a cottage. There's just no cottages here. I don't see a cottage anywhere. So for some reason they call it cottage country. Maybe 50, 60 years ago it was full of cottages, but right now it's full of mansions and big, bigger houses and bigger, bigger houses. All right, that is it for this uh, adventure on the 7th Trent. Well, this section of the 7th Trent, 7th Trent's massive. Yeah, apparently it takes days to do it, days to go for all the locks. So, uh, hey, maybe one day we should give it a go. Uh, get a group of guys, and girls, and I don't know, maybe do a long, long trip, a long like, adventure. So we're just pulling back into where we launched from. And uh, yeah, great. I didn't show you too much on the way back because we pretty much came the same way as we uh, went. So it wasn't too much to show you, but uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I hit, I hit 100 hours today on this Sea-Doo, which is not bad. I've only had it for four months and I've put 100 hours on in four months. Um, amazing adventures I've had so far. I think uh, this one's going to be episode 14, 13 or 14? 14. 14, this is episode 14 will be, so not a bad. Pretty busy times. Whoa, 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 one second, one second. I just hit 100 hours! Woohoo! Oh, four months, 100 hours. Yes, get in. What a busy year. I just saw it went, hey, it was 99 a second ago. It just hit 100, exactly. Nice. nice. Wow, okay, that's my celebration over and done with. We're only on 35 hours. That's 35. 35. 35? I had a dream of 35. Oh my God. My thing's getting worn out. 100 hours. 100 hours. Wow. That means you 